And welcome back, everybody. An Alaska man is on a mission to get honeybees through the winter alive. Yes, it's called sustainable beekeeping, and what used to be a far-fetched idea is now slowly catching on. On most days, this is where you'll find Tim Huffman. <laughs> he has no trepidation in dealing with these little miracle workers. It's very possible to have your own colony and be sustainable year after year, to get them through winter, to make your own queens, and to make your own honey. And this may look like beadlum, but Tim says... They're busy, right? But they're focused. And these bee boxes are busier than an airport during the holidays, landings and departures. They're just doing their business. They are, they could they're, care less about us. Yeah, because they you can't, do have to um, be aware. Let me yeah. introduce you to our King Bee. Hi, I'm Tim. I got my first bees in 2018. I was addicted shortly afterwards. Well, there are worse addictions, but first I had to ask Tim. Um, has anybody ever told you you look like Ted Danson? Yes, they have. Hey, take your hat off again for him. He's James Taylor, everybody. <laughs> Uncanny, right? Now, let's get down to beesness of these guys. Uh, uh, did you know? Now, honeybees aren't native to Alaska, so they're not a critical part of our ecosystem. But they are, uh, across the country, very important for many crops. Look at all that action. Is there a honey hierarchy? They have to have a queen, okay. yes. And, and why is that? Because it's a monarchy? The, the monarchy, the LOL. Tim had no time for my royal humor. Workers and queens are females. Okay. They can all lay eggs, but only the queen can lay a fertilized egg, which results in another worker. That... But what these fastidious bees do is pretty cool. In the summer, they have two goals. Store enough food to get through winter and reproduce the colony. No. Tim is really doing amazing things with bees here in Alaska. Getting them through the winter is innovative and notable because most Alaska beekeepers dispose of their bees at the end of the summer. Oh, and I needed to pay attention. But if you walk in front of them, you're in their flight path. And they're not mean, but they might land on you. Oh, walking through oh, the middle of them. Whatever I just did, don't, don't, <laughs> don't do that. Okay, now it was time to get an audience before Her Majesty the Queen. She's right there. Long abdomen, bald spot between her shoulder blades. Yes, that's her right there. Royalty. So what's going on here? So this is capped honey. The glistening stuff is nectar. And then the darker cells are stored pollen. Tim the Bee Man Huffman. He has a passion for pollinating his knowledge of one simple goal here in the Great White North. To teach people how to be sustainable, which means they get their bees through the winter year after year even in Alaska. And that's... Hi, I'm Tim, and I like bees. The All Good News. Did you say you what? What'd you say? I eat bee pollen. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a, a very good source of, I think, omega yeah. threes. I could be wrong about that, but I knew I know it's very good for you. I'm pretty sure it's a bee vitamin of some sort. <laughs> okay, I'll be here all week. Uh, Tim says anybody can become a sustainable backyard beekeeper. It takes a little learning time and some patience. He also has the only Alaska-based YouTube channel on bees. Great information for beekeepers here in Alaska. It's called Anchorage Backyard Beekeeping. Yeah, no, they say uh, honey from local bees is good for allergies and also yes. the pollen. Same the thing. pollen, too, without the uh, sugar content. Yes, even better. So that's great. There you go. All right. Uh, here's John Dickerson with what's coming up at 5 right here on CBS 5. On this.